Portugal is going through a very accelerated uh, energy transition process that it's pushing its grid to, to new limits. Portugal is very well endowed in terms of renewable energy sources, both water, wind uh, and sun, and has set as one of its strategic goals to be a source of low-cost green energy uh, in Europe. Uh, just as a reference, uh, this first trimester of 2024, 89% of all the energy consumed was from renewable sources. All this situation is, is putting strain on our network and we believe we need to address it in, in two ways. One way is of course through digitalization. We are investing a lot in smart grids and in smart meters to enable a more active participation of the, of the consumers and the more dynamic management of, of our grid. But that alone is not enough. Of course, we will require a lot of structural investment and we are forecasting that uh, grid investment will have to grow by almost 40% vis-a-vis uh, current levels in order to cope with these uh, net zero targets. At the EU level, there has been done a lot and the direction towards more electrification and decarbonization of the system it is clear. Initiatives like the Repower EU, Fit for 55 or the targets for 2040 state that very clear. Despite these guidelines, the build-out of infrastructure has not followed the desired trend and it's still, still lagging. This disconnect between the guidelines and the actual build-out can be attributed to the regulators not approving their investment plans at the required pace. So there's a clear need for alignment between policy and the way the local investment plans are approved. And this probably means that the regulation needs to evolve to become more agile and more adequate to the new distributed and more flexible energy system that we, we live in. In order to evolve in this way, Aero Electric is doing a major contribution with the Grids for Speed study that highlights a set of common challenges across several EU countries. Um, the first one is that there is a clear need to approve anticipatory investments. You need to be able to manage that risk and to deploy the infrastructure um, in advance. Another thing that we need to evolve has to do with the flexibility. DSOs across Europe need a more clear framework on how they should deploy flexibility and use it in their uh, investment uh, planning processes. Another one has to do with digitalization. It's not feasible to go through this transformation without smart meters and, and smart grids fully deployed. So there needs to be a lot of attention and in incentivizing that deployment. And of course, none of this can happen without a, an expansion-friendly context. It's clear that we need a visibility in the long term and adequate remuneration if this is to happen. If we want to do this uh, step, uh, we need to acknowledge that the investment needs to be evaluated, not only taking into account the impact that will have in the grid component of the tariff, but we should look at the overall Im impact um, in the energy cost. Grid investments are front-loaded, so it's natural that in the beginning the grid component may increase slightly, but in the long term that should lead to lower overall energy cost. We need efficiency in the process and also visibility for planning so that we can overall bring down the connection time. There is, of course, something that still can be done in most uh, states regarding the digitalization of all the permitting process. Um, the process was not designed for this amount of requests, especially at the self-consumption level and more smaller uh, connections. The other initiatives that I would highlight is what is already foreseen at the Renewable Energy Directive, the Renewable Acceleration Areas. For planning purposes, it is absolutely key that each country is clear about in which areas there will be uh, more accelerated uh, development of renewable energies, and that will link with the anticipatory investment required. Overall, I would 
say there are two major levers, adequate rate of return and access to public funding. We need an adequate rate of return and we need stability and visibility over that rate of return. There's no way around that. It is fundamental that there are no hidden taxes or levies that uh, are bringing that return down uh, in a less transparent way. There are other things that could help. Being able to use some funding, some public funds, in order to decrease the overall impact in the tariff.